STF adjustment is active on an image, we can see this green line along the side of the view selector. We can disable the STF by clicking the Enable Disable Screen Transfer Functions button or pressing F12. When we disable it, the green line disappears. When we create previews, the contrast adjustment from the main view is applied to them too. And they also have a green line along the side of the view selector. Even if the STF is disabled, new previews still inherit the STF adjustment from the main view, although the green lines don't appear. In fact, if we enable the STF again in each view, we can see that they all have the same contrast adjustment. But this doesn't mean that the STF has to be the same for all the views in an image window. Each view can have its own independent STF. For example, in the first preview, we're looking at the central region of the galaxy. Here, we might want to see the structures around the nucleus. So we're going to adjust the auto stretch so that it has a darker sky background and a lower aggressiveness. But in the other preview, we might want an auto stretch with a lighter sky background and higher aggressiveness to see the nebulae in the background better. So now we have three views, each with a different auto stretch. We can copy the auto stretch from any view to any of the others. For example, if we want to copy the auto stretch parameters from this view to the other two views, we can do it using the Copy Screen Transfer Functions button. Now the center of the galaxy and the image overall are much brighter. If we adjust the auto stretch again to see the structures of the nucleus, we can also copy this STF to the other two views. We can also reset to the default values. Keep in mind that the STF values are calculated using the statistics of the active view. If we now apply the auto stretch with the same default values to the main view, the result won't be the same as if we applied it to the other two views. This is because the statistics of the whole image aren't the same as those of the parts that make up the two previews. We can also copy an STF to a view from another image window. For example, here we have the same image, but with only the large-scale structures isolated. We're going to copy the STF adjustment from this image to this one. We do this by clicking and dragging the selector and pressing the Alt key. If we hover the cursor over the target view selector, when we press Alt, the cursor changes to a mid-tones function icon. If we drop it when that icon appears, the STF adjustment changes to the one we want. In other words, this image inherits the STF adjustment from the previous image. Remember, this image looks posterized because it's very smooth and the bit depth of the STF's 16-bit grayscale isn't sufficient to display it properly on the screen. We can solve this problem by changing to a bit depth of 24 bits and the posterization disappears. If we save an image in EXIF format, we can embed this STF adjustment in it. We're going to save a copy of this image with the suffix STF, keeping this display function checkbox checked. Now we close everything. And we open the first image, the one without the STF, and this new one. And we can see that the first one opens without any adjustment, and the second opens with a contrast adjustment. Finally, 
Remember that when we open a linear image, we can press Ctrl-A to apply an auto-stretch automatically without having to open the STF window.